times are kind of hopeless. And um, my fairies represent a, 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 a hope, a wish, wishfulness, you know, that, um, you know, <laughs> we're going to be saved by the fairies. <laughs> All the skyscrapers, you know, I felt like I was in a maze, you know, it just I could, couldn't see that much sky. And I came out here and just, this was, this called to me. This was it, you know, so I'm happy to be here. From Morongo Valley and Pioneer Town and Landers to Yucca Valley Joshua Tree, 29 Palms, and east of here in Wonder Valley. The artist community has grown slowly, but its roots are deep. It's like a desert plant. People who are talented, creative, motivated, and doing something. Most of them came out here to simplify their lives, to reinvent their lives, to find a little piece of heaven in the desert. I started making fairies when my children were in kindergarten, Waldorf school. My friend had a sheep. She wasn't weaving anymore. She had a whole garage full of fleece. So she gave it to me and my daughters and I started winding these dolls, which we then turned into fairies. I've been doing artwork since probably the early 90s, and I love playing with charcoal. There's one right there, Chardé. I have done some oil painting, and since I moved here to the desert, I've been doing uh, printmaking. I was born in Connecticut, but I discovered uh, Boston during the summer of love. <laughs> My children, I always say, oh, my mother was at Woodstock. Like, like that's the best thing I ever did in my life. Uh, I met my first husband in Boston, and, and we spent uh, many years in, in Mexico and South America. I did have my own island that I rented for $16 a month. No electricity, but I had two little houses, one at the shore where you had water for cooking, and then one up at the top of the mountain above the clouds where I went for sleeping and <laughs> tripping. <laughs> we had a fun restaurant. Yeah, all the food was cooked in marijuana butter unless you it, a, asked especially not to. And I came back to the States and thought, well, I'll get healthy. And then I would get divorced and I would be back in South America. But the divorce took years. It was, yeah, it was a nasty one. And my second divorce was much better because we had nothing <laughs> to fight over. When my children were in college, I got a six-week bus pass and went all over the country visiting family and friends to kind of a location scout. Instead of the empty me staying there with the empty nest, <laughs> I flew. <laughs> I flew the coop. I was a, a nightclub DJ for 15 years, and music was such a big part of my life. And I played the piano when I was younger, too. In the late 80s, I went to Virginia, Richmond, Virginia for a little while and lived there. And in need of a job, I, uh, I was like, I don't know what I'm gonna do. My friend Jay said, he moved with me. He said, well, you like being naked and you like art, you do like art, don't you? And I said, well, yeah. And he said, well, why don't you get a job modeling at the uh, college you know, for art classes? And I, was, and I had never thought about that before. So I did, got the job, and that's what piqued my interest in art. At this point in my life, I had pretty much grown tired of the club scene. So, moved to Manhattan for a little while with some friends and realized I needed wide open spaces, so I came out to California. I had a, a 1965 Plymouth Valiant convertible at the time. It was red, and uh, I was just, you know, it was just driving in the desert with that top down, you know, it was, uh, I, you couldn't have told me anything. I was happy. But I also really met uh, a, a an amazing group of people up here. Artists, right away, and uh, some radical fairies, you know, and that's wonderful. And there's a little, uh, great little radical fairy uh, nudist resort up the street, and I just, I love it there, you know. So, um, it, it, I don't know, it just, it just felt right. It absolutely felt right. It felt like this is where I belonged.
Yeah, the wonderful thing about this house is all the windows. It's hard to be depressed in this house <laughs> because of all the light. And it's a little hard to get work done when I'm too close to the beaten <laughs> track and I have a little, a few too many visitors. But uh, I sh I, I'll probably complain someday I don't have enough visitors. There's fairies on my summer tree. No, that's not a Christmas tree. It's a summer tree. It was a Christmas tree. And so I couldn't bear to take it down, so I made it a Valentine's tree and an Easter egg tree. And now it's a summer tree with fairies. Most of these fairies have been given to me. I, mm, I didn't take time to dust. It, that's kind of a <laughs> futile task here, because two days later, it'll be dusty. So you don't see many, most people have given up dusty when they move out here, unless they're really fanatic. And, I, and really, clean house is a sign of a misspent life, I, I think. <laughs> when I moved here um, to Yucca, with Al, uh, I didn't really have a place to work. And he had this garage, so I, um, one day I got a wild hair and I just came in here and just started organizing the entire thing. And I was able to squeeze all of his storage stuff back there in that uh, quarter. So this front quarter became my studio, which is great because I can open the garage door and have a great view of some hills and boulders out there and nice breeze. So it works pretty good for me, you know, I have to say. I. Uh, needed it and I made it happen, you know. This is the best thing about this house, is this student, is my studio. We have the Queen of Hearts here, and, and she was inspired by this tarot card. I used to have a baking business called Queen of Hearts Tarts and Queen of Cups Cakes. I, I, people thought it was in a completely different business, but <laughs> this is gonna be a Marie Antoinette fairy. She'll be fun to dress. <laughs> you can give, they can give the peace sign. You see, even the hands are posable. That's the beauty of these fairies in that they have attitude. There's a water fairy. I use some of the yarns in the fairies too. Her, her feet and her, her hair. But this is summer. She's got her, her fan and her sunglasses. And then I have autumn, Japanese lantern pocketbook. And these uh, materials are all paint dyed. And this, of course, you can probably guess, is my, is my winter fairy, Snow Queen. Oops, she's losing her stars. With uh, doilies, I used doilies for her wings. I hated to sell her because she was one of my favorites, but I, I kept her picture over there if you want to see spring. She had a daffodil hat and forsythia. These are mostly cone hats because they have pine cone hats. They all have, some of them even have pine cone shoulder pads and their feet are made, their shoes are made of pine cones too. Graham Parsons, anybody? Yeah. <laughs> it's a grievous angel. The only angel I ever made. People have always said, oh, you should make angels. They're really hot now. And I tell them, give them. Fairies are gonna be hot someday. And I think they are now. This one, it, to me, it's like the spiral of life, and it's got a few of my favorite things in there, and they're very subtly in there. Uh, there's a sun here, there's a hula hoop dancer here, and then a couple little dancing figures here. They're very faint, but um, someone actually wants this one. This one is actually the, from the same plate as this one. This was the second time through, um, and I find that the third time through is always my favorite. They're more pastel, more uh, subtle. These guys come back to my days of me being a DJ and loving to dance and loving to make people dance. Um, there's nothing like it. There's nothing like it and I still love it. I don't DJ anymore, but I guess I miss it sometimes. This is my very first one and I kind of like it. It's got, a, uh, it's got this floating head, you know, and uh, a star. This. Right here, all of this, that is from, I found, this is great, I found an old Loretta Lynn cassette tape, and it was busted, so I pulled out the, pulled out the tape and uh, used that in my artwork. So this is, has a little Loretta Lynn in it. Summer is when I really get in gear because I've got Christmas coming. And that's when I can sell my fairies. I can sell just about every fairy that I can make by Christmas. 
And and sometimes because I I, I do have fibromyalgia and chronic fatigue syndrome and of late mononucleosis, I'm not all that productive. And, and so a friend comes by. Some days I put the sign out on my door, no visitors today. Very factory in process. Um, but everyone thinks that doesn't apply to them. <laughs> so I often welcome a distraction. I, I'll say, oh, I'm working on, my, on the fairies. Why don't you come back in my studio? Then they want a cup of coffee, or there's an opportunity to feed them. And you know what I miss most about being a mother, other than my children, is that I was actually needed. <laughs> you know, I, I don't have that many. There's not that many opportunities uh, in in my life nowadays where I'm actually needed. So, if a friend comes by that's hungry and thirsty, <laughs> I'm needed. <laughs> Plexi plate that I've uh, beveled the edges with sandpaper so it doesn't cut into the paper. And then you just uh, put some ink on your roller and just roll some on. And then my other little stencil, my little dancing guy, let's use him, and I'll just put some yellow on him too, just for fun. Okay, there we go. This starts with a, a sheared sheep's fleece, mostly. I don't wash it so much that the lanolin comes out. I, I like a nice, uh, I like to feel the oil and I never have to use hand cream. First I'll put on, I used to use vegetable dyes, and oh, I'd collect them myself, and so I felt like I was, it was just, it was so organic for the Waldorf school, you know. But then people were coming back and telling me that their dogs and cats had eaten the fairies, and I found out that if I used chemical dyes, they, did, they smelled different and they weren't quite so attractive to the cats and the dogs. So I'm just going to use a little bit of this writ. I always want to have a cooking show. I feel like <laughs> I could have been a new age Martha Stewart. I had to use a rice cooker, and I'm just going to throw all kinds of fleece in. Okay, let's see what color we have here. Oh, that's a pretty lavender. I didn't get all the twigs out. You get a lot of twigs and fleece. <laughs> Although more and more people now are putting a little capes on there, on their sheep. This is all bits and pieces of different colors. Now, this, these are all natural fleeces. I have some camel here. I have yak fur and a little piece of cashmere. Shetland, where's my silk? I have here. For hair, I prefer mohair from the kid. The first, first shearing of a baby goat. This, this is Wensleydale. It, it's like a, it's like a wig already, isn't it? Almost a, I have made Rastafaris. This is regular mohair from an older goat. You see how it doesn't have the shine or the, the tight curls. These are like these things that look like dog brushes are hand carters. They have carding drums, too. So, that's the fun part, getting it off. I'm gonna find a nice piece for the head. And we make a knot. There's the head. Another pipe cleaner. You just tie under the, the neck. So I take little pieces and I just wind. It's very satisfying if you're a hair twirler, oh boy. And this is a special order I have for uh, a, la a lady who is East Indian, so I knew that she should be a little darker skinned and have dark hair. And she loves to cook. Wetting the paper and then drying it down a little bit. Okay. <laughs> And then just crank it through. Mm. And then I like to sneak a peek to see if the pressure was uh, strong enough before I actually take it off. And you know what? I think I'm going to uh, 
Tiny just did tiny bit more. The first one's never my favorite. I usually always like to run the plate three times and the third one's my favorite, so. And then you just lift it up and you see what you get, you know? Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's not. Well, I usually start with the skirt. The layer I want on the top, I put on first. So I dress them from the feet. Her name's Rose, so I have to have some rose petals. So there you have her skirt. I made the apron out of my old pillowcase. I also made a little hat. Rose right there. And I'll put her apron on. I have these velvet leaves. For the heel, I'll just take a little off. And I will glue in the middle. There you have a leaf shoe for her, a leaf high heeled shoe. I did find this already at the swap meet. A pedestal for her. It's actually knives. <laughs> so, that is one of the hardest things, is to get them to sit up straight. You won't see any of this because I totally go over it with a whole different um, painting design and all, and crystals and sequins and glitter. She'll become a real fairy when she gets her wings. Right now she's just a flower child, and that's not so bad either. <laughs>
from children. I find myself staring at babies in the supermarkets, in the, in the banks, the rare places I get to see them, but they never let me hold them. <laughs> And I'm not a grandmother yet. My eldest daughter is 36 and my twins are 25 and no, nobody's even married yet. I told him that the only thing that would make me leave Joshua Tree would be if I became a grandmother. And, and maybe that's why I'm still not a grandmother. They don't want me moving in with them. <laughs> I get into this um, kind of like a, just a mania when I do artwork, you know, and I'm just, and it, it, and it, it, it I, I, it does something for me. It, it, it helps me get through those times where I just don't know what to do with myself sometimes, you know. People need to believe in, in magic, in something good and kind. And um, part of the attraction for, me, for fairies for me was that my mother grew up in England and she got us to do anonymous random acts of kindness by telling us that we were helping the fairies. Mm -hmm. Neighbors would go to the hospital and they'd come back and their, their garden would be, would be all just like the fairies, all better than before they left, all weeded, and, and we would do that. <laughs> Although when she died, when I was 14, the whole rest of my years in Yellsville, Connecticut, people would tell me about her not-so-anonymous <laughs> random acts of kindness, which they People knew she, she tried very hard to, to be anonymous, but the word was out that she was a kind-hearted person. I'll never live up to, to that, but I try. You know, I do artwork when I uh, feel good, you know, and, I, and it, it makes me feel that much better. And it doesn't, you know, it doesn't bother me if, if nobody buys it or if, uh, you know, if, if really, even if nobody liked it, you know, it makes me feel good. I like it, and it's, so yeah, it's, it's for me, mostly, you know, mostly for me. When I was young, I wanted to be either a painter or a fashion designer, and I feel that with the fairies, I have and it's made my dreams come true every day. And I get to work on my fairies. I'm, I'm making my dreams come true because I'm designing their clothes, their shoes, their hats, and I'm painting their fairy wings. If I have one piece of wisdom to pass on, it's don't forget the, all the small ways you can make your dreams come true. <laughs>